He gets wrapped. Barry Larkin takes Pat out, tied at three. Then in the fourth, same score, runners on first and second. Greg Graybeck loves to hit off Burba. Little bloop. It falls. Sheffield in 4-3 Marlins. Bottom eight, Renee Latchman says Terry Matthews. You're out. Yorkus Perez in, runners on first and second. Jeff Branson attempts to lay down a bunt. Watch Charlie Williams. He's going to call Willie Green out at third base. Ray Knight says, how do you call him out? And he says, Ray, you're out of here. Then Rob Nen comes in. He has been one of the great dominant pitchers in the game. Fastball, the great slider. He throws 97. Now, we missed this the early. It's now 32 strikeouts and four walks on the season. Awesome. Give them the lead, they get the win. Marlins now won 12 in the last 14. Hit for the cycle the other day. Oy. Deep over the right field wall, number three. Cards are on top, 2-0. The next time, Graybeck faces Mabry. Would he go at him or no? It would actually be Mabry lining one right back at Graybeck. Glove work. Brings it in. Graybeck's counterpart, Donovan Osborne. Tremendous. James Mouton, the high cheese. Three runs, eight hits, complete game. Top eight cards flinging. 3-2 lead and Luis Salisea. Huge night. Mabry scores as this goes off the wall. Three hits for Alisea and the cards win 5-3. It's the first complete game in nearly three years for Osborne. He came to the Sox trying to hit three. Double down the right field line against the A's. Will Cordero, Hasselman, O'Leary, Tyler all score. Bird a three and give Will Cordero a three. Same inning, it's 4-0 Sox and from 33 to 33. Jose Canseco is eighth home on the left. Two run shot, 6-0 Red Sox. Boston, a quick six, something the area hasn't seen since. Curtis Martin was running the football for Bill Parcells. 6-6, six, six, same inning. Mike Stanley would score in a Troy O'Leary double. Extra point, up, good. 7-0 Red Sox. Bottom five, 11-1. And Canseco continues his onslaught. Two-run shot is ninth. Hitting and scoring not seen since Cam Neely was getting it done. And... Mo Vaughn wearing Cam Neely's elbow pad and protected him against getting hit so much by pitches. And really, he did it is some Cam hitting. Neely's pad. He did some hitting, he did some scoring. Peter's not lying, it's his pad. As for the Cordero injury, he was hurt, had to be taken out. Brewers, Peter Frankie Rodriguez. Well, the one thing about Frankie, he tends to try to throw about six or eight different pitches. They've been trying to get him, boil it down to his best stuff. There, you see the fork ball now. Uh, his fastball is good enough in almost any situation, uh, as um, they quickly found out. Game now 1-1 in the fifth for the Brewers. Similar situation. Cars on second. Valentin to right. Carr would score 2-1 Brewers, so Valentin makes up for that K. And Carr showing a little glove work in center. This guy's so solid. He has been a, one of the best defensive, if not the best center fielder in the league this year defensively. Hangs on to it. Now top seven, Scott Stahoviak loses Jeff Cielo's pop in foul ground. Should have been an out. It's not, and Cirillo gets a second chance to deliver, and he does. To right off Rodriguez, it's a double. It would end up being huge because he would score the game-winning runs to the Royals. Joe Vidiello, the first pitch, off the right center field wall, stand-up double. Your next batter is Michael Tucker. Well, they've been waiting all year for him to get hot. He's got a great swing, very quick bat. There, he lines the ball down on the right field corner for a huge hit in this game. Royals up one zip. Bottom three, they're up 2-0. Man on on third, Henkin started to lose control. Wild pitch scores Goodwin, they're up 3 nothing. Bottom of the fourth, another mistake. Throws the ball away. Tucker comes into score. Royals up 4-1. Jays came back, but Kansas City goes on and wins 5-4. to four. Top of the second, no score. Dave Silvestri singles to left. Chairman Obando coming around. He's in there, one nothing Montreal. Bottom of the fourth now. Dave McCarty, a two-run home run. It's over the wall and left. Three homers now on the year for McCarty. Giants down 5-4. Bottom eight, 6-5 Expos. Bases loaded, two out. John Dunston, low angle. This is a low angle shot. Why? Because the great hustle. Run scores. Game's tied at six. Next man up is Tom Lampkin, Mike Dyer in Dyer Straits. Why? He walked him. Bases were full, so Glenn Allen Hill scores. Hill comes in, 7-6 Giants. Next man up, Mark Carrion, base hit. McCarty comes in, Giants up 9-6. Top of the ninth now. Rod Beck on to close it. Obando, Dan Javier, oh, he made the great grab. The Giants with five in the eighth go on to win 
nine six. They've now won nine of the last 13. They're three and a half games behind first place San Diego. Montreal has now lost five of its last seven. Nothing. Reggie Smith wants his guys to concentrate. Mondesi, single left. Bernard Gilkey, the third. What do we have? Piazza's out. A seven to five fielder's choice. Tommy Lasorda, I haven't seen that in ages. Top of the fist, still one of the Mets. Vizcaino sacrificing. Mike Flowers never charged the ball. Everybody's safe. One battle later. Rico Brony is at the plate. Candiotti. Oh, he threw it away. So Johnson moves over to third. Bronia still at the plate. Runners at first and third. Bronia, who had three hits, he drove in four runs. A ground ball, a second. Delano the Shields. Whoops. Roger Cedeno. Whoops. We got double whoopses. And now we got Cedeno throwing it in. A triple whoops on one sequence. Two run score. Three nothing Mets. Don't read the lips. Don't read those lips. Top of the seventh. Candiotti, a knuckleballer. Hunley, watch him move up in the box and crank it. His 12th home run of the year. And the Mets win easily. The final score over L.A., 7-1. Bobby Jones wins his fourth straight start, improving his record to four. Marks. Brady Anderson, fourth inning, gone. Number 16 for Brady, 3 one oh. It's been a couple weeks since he hit one. Got after that fast start. 16 home runs, matches his season high from last year. Roberto Alomar, two-run home run to left center. He didn't even touch that. Well, that shows you how very difficult it is to pitch in that park. As great as Robbie Alomar is, it also tells you why Kent Merker has had such an adjustment. How about Bobby Bowe? That leaves in any park. O's are rolling. 13 to 1, your final four RBIs apiece for Alomar and Benilla. Birds have won eight. They're going to be dangerous. Guess what? Mark Grace wasn't hitting. He went down. Avery got his first seven. And then they're so competitive. Gladman can hit, so every one of them can hit. I mean, they're all great athletes, which is part of what makes them such great pitchers. That's Avery. They're so competitive, the Braves pitchers. And now it appears as if the hitters are getting involved. Uh oh. Chipper Jones goes the other way, number six. Three run shot. Braves get seven in the second. In the bottom of the fourth, it's Crime Dog. Baseball team. Uh, number two, I should say number 12, it's a two run home run. 11 nothing Atlanta. We saw Jermaine Dye come up in his first home run for the Braves. They take McGriff up because it's a route. That's Tyler Houston. Who? Tyler Houston's first major league home run. Jones and Tyler Houston each with five RBIs. Danny Nagel with two outs. Young, master of his domain. A solo 403-foot job, his third of the season. Rockies up 4-0. Bottom of the fourth, now five zip rocks. Two on, two outs. Ellis Burks. The shot to center and the pitcher, Armando Reynoso, comes around to score. 6 nothing Rockies. All six runs come with two outs. Top seven, Pirates down 6-3. Jeff King. Scores Carlos Garcia, Bucks within two. They would get as close to 6-5, but then bottom seven. Young on first, Burks at the plate. Double down the third baseline. Al Martin, Edward Scissorhands. That makes it 7-5 Rockies, and we get our theme. Ten runs for the Rockies. They win it 10-7. Six times this season, Colorado's hit double digits.